Okay, so with the cuffs for the short sleeves, oh, sorry, the cuffs for the long sleeves, sewing the short ends together, right sides together. The second one you don't need to see me sew a straight seam you know how to do that you then pressing the seam open and folding the cuff in half wrong sides together um, so that use your little cuff for the bottom of the sleeve um, so I will press that the cuffs I have pressed wrong sides together, press the seams open, press wrong sides together. Now I'm going to put that over the sleeve and we're just going to line up all the raw edges together. Um, so the sleeve seam will line up with the seam on the cuff here. And we're going to, like before, put a pin in either side to hold those seam allowances flat as we sew over and then we have a notch at the opposite edge here and we're gonna just pin that as well so you can of course use clips if you find clips easier um, especially if you're using an overlocker um, and if you are using an overlocker I suggest you look at my overlocking in the round video you'll find that by searching overlocking in the round on in the search bar and that will show you how to finish off the beginning and ends when you're doing something in a loop like this okay so I'm just going to now so I've got the sleeve inside the cuff on the outside I'm just going to kind of stretch this slightly and then slide it under the presser foot like that so I'm keeping the other side of the cuff out of the way I'm lining this up with the 3 8 line and putting the needle down so just push that pin in a little bit more so it doesn't get caught and we're just gonna stretch slightly just a little stretch, gentle stretch, and off we go. So I'll come up to the seam line before I get there, I'll take that pin out. Got a few layers there to get over the seam. That is ideal. curling here Just not letting go of that bit where it was curling so gentle stretch again between the points so you often would do something like a cut um, a waistband with four points but a cuff is really fiddly to get four points in so two is usually enough but if you want to add quarter points you can do um, so we're coming to the top the other notch Joining up the stitches, do a couple of stitches in reverse, 
and then and trim your thread tails. Okay, so I will press this um, next and press the seam allowances towards the sleeve away from the cuff and then we'll do a row top stitching around here but before that I'm going to sew the second cuff in place. As before we're lining up so we're putting the the sleeve is the right way around we're putting the cuff over it and the cuff is the same both sides now that you've folded it wrong sides together so you're placing the sleeve inside the cuff lining up your underarm seam with the seam on the cuff double pin that and then flip because we're coming to the opposite side the halfway point of the cuff and just matching up those notches there put that pin in and then it's beneficial at this point just to kind of give it a little tug and make sure that everything does sit together flatly. You can, can this is where I said you can put an extra pin in, sort of at your quarter points. Make sure you stretch the fabric and pop the pin in um, while it's stretched so that will give you the correct amount of stretch across that. It takes a bit of dexterity to be able to do that. Um, that. The more you practice with things like that, the better your fabric handling skills will become and you'll need to do things like pinning less. Okay, so I'm going to start about here. Um, just make sure all these other pins are pinned, uh, poked quite far in because that will stop them catching on other bits. Remember your 3 8 seam allowance, line that up there, and off we go. That pin's trying to come out already. And the key to doing a successful cuff neck band is the stretch between the pins, the stretch between your points that you know are correct. Um, so that is what makes it even and um, sit nicely, all those things that you want from your cuffs is because you've stretched as you sew and it's it for this it's just a gentle stretch we're just stretching the um, the cuff to meet the width of the sleeve this isn't an extreme one you know sometimes you have to gather a sleeve into a cuff but this this one it's not nice and easy um, Before I do anything else, I just want to show you, this is my little sausage tailor's ham seam roll um, and this is something I made last year but it just means I can press this um, little cuff on here quite easily. So I just put it over the end of the sleep seam roll sausage and then I can press, it's got good uh, resistance. Um, could probably have done with a little bit more stuffing but that's over a year's worth of use. There is a sew along for Taylor's Ham and Seam Roll. Um, 
if you want to make your own pressing tools and I would highly recommend it actually because you can make um, all sorts of shapes and sizes that really work for the projects that you do. So now we're just going to top stitch around this cuff fiddly because it's a tricky little uh, circle but we're just again just lining up with that bit on the foot um, and off we go. So again you're just moving everything out of the way, stretching slightly um, as you sew and good pressing will make this job easier. started near the underarm because that's the most discreet place to have extra stitches. Um, you can trim your thread tails. So in the sleeve itself is inside out now and that's how I pressed it with it inside out. Um, so we can get into the middle here like this. off, come back around and join up. I'm just going to trim this seam allowance off on the inside. So this is exactly the same technique as I used before. So all I'll do is fold the cuff to the inside so that the seam itself is sort of standing proud. It's that way and I'll trim from this inside um, section so that I've got a real sharp line to kind of guide me around. So just a millimetre or two away. And this is slightly scary when you're going through all those seams because it feels like there's a lot of bulk in there. Um, and if you've got bulk in there, that's when you panic to think you're cutting something you shouldn't be. So it should all feel even. You know, your scissors shouldn't feel like they're meeting any bulkier parts. same so we've got the cuff outwards fold the cuff to the inside and then 
going to start just before the seam. there there we go so just to show you that is what the finished cuff looks like just with a neat row of top stitching around <laughs> <laughs>